Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land. I'm Raleen Marks, and every day around about this time, I take a look at those top stories making headlines in Israel. And we begin with the IDF being on high alert for possible uh, violence, and this has been threatened from elements within the Gaza Strip ahead of the Jerusalem flag march scheduled to take place later today. Now, we don't have the final route of the march, Hamas made threats in case it takes place uh, in and around the old city, especially around Damascus Gate. The flag march was postponed because of a flare-up of violence last month. Defence Minister Benny Gantz has met with police and security officials and is going to want to try and avoid any kind of violence between Jews and Arabs as much as possible. Uh, he wants this march to go ahead as peacefully as possible. However, the IDF are prepared for any eventuality, including possible car ramming attacks, incendiary balloons, as well as the firing of rockets, which will break the very precarious ceasefire that is in place. Earlier today, Hamas fired three rockets. They landed in the sea and just moments ago, IDF troops along the border with Gaza clashed and we do have it confirmed from the fire department as well as police in the south that at least seven fires have been started as a result of incendiary balloons. So we will be keeping a close eye on Jerusalem today. The US Embassy have issued a warning to their staff not to go anywhere near the old city during the course of today. This is a sentiment that has been echoed by the United Nations for their personnel as well. Today, Israel said bye-bye la hitraot, or actually we didn't say hitraot because we don't want to see them again, to the mandatory indoor mask wearing. As of today, Israelis no longer have to wear masks on public transport or inside buildings. However, masks will still be mandatory for anybody who is unvaccinated and is going to a healthcare facility or anybody entering quarantine as well as anyone taking a flight and Israelis are commenting that we really feel a renewed sense of freedom having no longer to wear our masks. And our final story takes us back to Defence Minister Benny Gantz who has made his recommendation. He has issued a proposal to the new government for an investigative committee into the Moron disaster that killed 45 people on Lagba Omer. Should this proposal be accepted, what is recommended is that a Supreme Court judge independent of the government head this up so that we can find out what was the cause of the disaster and take the necessary precautions and safeguarding measures to prevent any kind of disaster. The likes of this happening again and I think the families of all those who lost loved ones or who had loved ones injured will be very very grateful for this. Those are our top stories making headlines. Don't forget that uh, if you like our content, please like, share, subscribe, all those good things. And I'm going to tell you where to do that in a second. You can find our original content on our website at www.layoftheland.online. And if you would like to write for Lay of the Land, it does give you excellent exposure because we are read all over the world. Please contact us via our website to find out what the criteria is. Today we will have an article by Dave Kaplan all about our incoming new president, Isaac Herzog. It will be up on our Facebook page tomorrow while you're on Facebook, if you're viewing this very brief there. If you haven't already, please like us and follow us. Share the content because this way we get Israel's news out to the mainstream. We're also on YouTube. Please join our growing community there by subscribing to the Israel Brief and don't forget to share it as well. And we're on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5. That's at Lay of the Land 5. And we would love it if you followed us and interacted with us as well. So with today's edition of the Israel Brief, I'm Raleen Marks and we'll chat again tomorrow.